blessing on the sermon. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Please be seated. Unless your justice abound more than that of the Pharisee, scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today's Gospel is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, and it is from the Sermon on the Mount, and I recommend that it. it's a beautiful Gospel to read again and again where our Lord teaches how to be a good Christian. Today I'd just like to speak on kind of partly to do one of the dolors of our blessed day, the flight into Egypt. And in this mystery, God, the creator, is flying from his creatures. Herod wants to put our Lord to death because he sees him as a, a rival to his own power. But what is terrible is the opposite. It's this dreadful sight of the flight of creatures from their creator, which we see going on all the time. And when faith has opened our eyes, what is seen the world presents. And just so you know, these thoughts that I'm giving you are from Father Faber, oratorian of the uh, two centuries ago, and it's about Our Lady's sorrows, the foot of the cross. So when we have the faith and we see the world going to its destruction, it is a dreadful sight. And God in his omnipresence, his ever-present love, is pursuing his creatures, his guilty creatures, but is not to do anything but to save them. He pursues us not to punish us, but to save us. And there's not a place in the whole world, not a retirement of poverty, not a haunt of sin, or any unlikely unbeseeming place for so vast a majesty, where he is not following his creatures and trying almost to force his gifts upon them. And that's the amazing thing. You know, God wants to give us his grace. He wants us to have that friendship with him. And he almost has to force it upon us, upon us human beings. We just don't seem to want God to come into our lives. And so everywhere, men are flying from this generous, this merciful, this tender pursuit of God. And it seems almost as if the work of man, the grand object of their lives, is to flee from God, to live their lives as if it were the time was given them to avoid God, as if it were a respite from the necessity of God's presence in eternity. We're going to be normally with Him if we save our souls in eternal life. And it's almost as if here below will leave us alone so we can live our lives be separate from thee, and it's almost unfair to, for God to intervene in our lives. As if space were given us to avoid our creator. And we see it even in children. They're flying from God with all their might and main. And it seems as if they might understand just as well as grown-ups and had made, it, made their minds up to determinedly avoid him. But God speaks, he entreats, he pleads, he cries out aloud, but they still run. He sends his son and his beams upon them to win their hearts by the excess of his fatherly indulgence, but they run. He then throws shadows, darkness over them to make them sober and wise, but they still run. He will have them. Great graces go forth to their souls like swift stones from a sling and they fall. But they're up in a moment and continue their flight from him. 
or if he reaches them because they are too much hurt, they only let him wipe away the blood, clear away the mud, give them a kiss, and then immediately they're up and they are running away from him. And so almost as uh, in order not to be baffled and almost like a trickery, you could say, but it's not. He will send his grace through living water and he will baptize these children, babies, before they have the chance to run away from him. He hides himself in the sacrament of baptism. But it seems as soon as they reach the age of reason, they then want to get up and run away from God. It's almost before they can walk, then they will run away from him. And this is the dola, the sorrow of our blessed lady, to see creatures running away from God, the source of life and happiness and peace and grace. It's the, it's the sorrow of the sacred heart in the garden of olives. It's not so much that he's sweating his blood for the, for the pains and the sufferings that he's going to endure. Of course he is, but it's more the ingratitude of men. It's that these sufferings are wasted, are so wasted on so many people. And if it is not us who are running away from God, it's the world that is preventing us from reaching him. And so we see great regions that had the faith that have completely lost it. Countries that were Catholic, that are now not totally Protestant or not even Protestant, they're atheistic, they're pre-Masonic. And so we see how the world also prevents souls from reaching God, for that grace of God reaching him. And we see souls tied up in family arrangements that are not what they should be. Or they have to live away from the means of grace. They live among bad examples. They're forced into uncongenial dissipation. Or they're put into the alternative of judging their parents in order to, if, if they follow the will of God, they have to judge their parents. Or if they obey their parents, then they have to go against the law of God. Some are entangled in some unsuitable marriages. Or they're forced into ambitious temptations of worldly positions. Or their religious vocations are rough ridden. How much is tied up by money arrangements? Fortunes left under conditions which without heroic grace preclude conversion. How many people fight over inheritance? And then there's education. People are sent to well, today, it's, 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 this is written um, you know, quite a long time ago, but it says that because of money, they can't go to a good Catholic school. Want of money is about the liberty of many souls. So we have all these things. Many, through their own fault or the fault of another, are tied up away from God by the temporal consequences of some misfortune. Homes are broken up. Souls are imprisoned by unsuitable occupations or in unfavorable places. And even in our own day and age, we can think about the difficulty of even getting to mass during this um, COVID uh, pandemic, whatever that's in the world. Closed, churches are closed. Uh, I heard something quite extraordinary that... Uh, a priest was saying mass, I was told, seven times on a Sunday in order to allow the faithful to get to mass. This is in another country because the number of faithful is reduced so much. It's something that cannot be sustained. But the, So there's just so many things that are preventing us from 
receiving the grace of God. And it's almost, it will take a miracle for the grace of God to enter our souls. When we look around us, we just see the situation just seems to be absolutely hopeless. But where decisions that we've made cannot be changed, still our ability to draw to God is never irremediable. We can always turn to God. He is always there with his grace. He calls us. He begs us. And we have to live differently from this world. When we have the faith, we cannot simply keep the commandments. We need to go further. We need to practice the evangelical counsels. You know, as our Lord said in today's gospel, unless your justice is greater than that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. They kept the law, thou shalt not kill. But they still had anger and hatred towards their brethren. And our Lord says, when you hate your brother, The consequence of unrepented sin is hell. So anyone who's angry with, well, angry with his brother is worthy of hell, says our Lord in today's gospel. So we have to, uh, our justice and mercy must abound greater than scribes and the Pharisees. So this is the door of Our Lady to see so many souls going astray. And if she sees them, she has the ability, the grace, the mercy given to her by God to lead souls on the path of justice. So we need to hold on to devotion to our Blessed Mother to try and over, to prevent the sorrows that she has of seeing so many souls being lost. So at least we who have the faith, let us be strong in our conviction. Let us do as much as we can to love God with all our hearts, to console the Sacred Heart, to have a great devotion to our Blessed Mother through the Holy Rosary, which is the solution to every problem that there may be. May God grant us His grace and our Blessed Lady watch over us and grant us the grace of perseverance in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>